R. Kelly is now engaged, or so it seems, to Joycelyn Savage. But it's also reported that her parents don't believe that she is quite engaged to R. Kelly. But who's to say? Only they truly know. It goes into one of the articles that says, alleged sex victim of R. Kelly, Joycelyn Savage, stated in a letter to the courts that she was engaged to the incarcerated singer. In an update, Savage's parents stated that they do not believe that they're truly engaged. Now, Joycelyn, who was a big name in this documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, but to see it that she's writing letters to the judge after he got a 30 year sentence, it seems that she has not abandoned R. Kelly as a lot of people stated during and after the sentencing. We know that the jury found R. Kelly guilty back in September of 21 and that just weeks ago he was sentenced to the 30 years. Now this is what I continue to say. R. Kelly would not serve 30 years or anywhere near it. There will be an appeal process and once that appeal process goes through, R. Kelly is likely to serve no more than four years and with time served, likely to be out within the next two years. Back to making a lot of money for a lot of people high up in the industry. But I want you guys to remember that I said it first. R. Kelly will serve no more than four, maybe five years. With time served, R. Kelly is likely to be released within the next two years. And even the charges that's going on in Chicago for the child pornography, he's likely to get a slap on the wrist. And I don't mean that in any disrespectful way, but he's beaten this charge before and under different circumstances, of course. But in all likelihood, those charges will be reduced and there will be no additional time added to those. But there's going to be a lot that he's going to need to do, like um, reporting himself as a sex offender. We know that that's likely to happen. But let's go into the letter. In the letter, Savage stated, I'm Robert Kelly's fiance, and also that she is not the victim that the government portrayed her to be. Savage would also state R. Kelly was amazing to her. Now, the attorney for Savage's parents, Gerald Grigg, stated, the entangle, the engagement is news to the family, and they wonder why the letter was submitted to the courts and she did not testify in support of her alleged fiance. What I can say to that, there may have been a lot of pressure put on her because if you know how the government or the justice system works, they would tell you a lot of lies that they're gonna charge you with this, that, and the other, accessory to trafficking, sex trafficking minors, blah, blah, blah. And they will make you believe that if you don't testify and say what we want you to say, that we're gonna get all these trumped up charges on you and you're gonna serve time. And it happens all the time. That's why I said you can't fully believe everything that's placed in front of you when it comes to, to the media. Because there's always a lot going on behind closed doors. A lot of people who've been involved with the law should know this. So do not think that just because she didn't stand up during a trial that she felt the way that a lot of people said that she felt like as a victim. Clearly, having time to clear her head and get through all that's going on, she doesn't feel that she's a victim and she's willing to still be engaged with the man or finally being engaged with the man, which I believe for R. Kelly would be a good thing. Now, whether or not he will live life accordingly the way that he needs to and be out the limelight for any nonsense aside from just making music remains to be seen. But if he was smart, which we said back in 2008, if he was smart, and we found out that he wasn't too smart. It doesn't take a person to be able to read and write to be smart. That's book smart. That's educational. There's a such thing as common sense. Just common reality, the human nature, understanding right from wrong, understanding what to do and what not to do doesn't take a person to be able to read and write to know these things. 
But as we stated last week, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years behind bars for committing federal sex crimes. If he happens, it goes on in this article to say, if he happens to complete a sentence, his punishment won't be over. Kelly would have to participate in mental health treatment and must avoid contact with anyone under the age of 18. R. Kelly will also be under five years of supervised release once he's out of jail, which is basically pr probation. So, if all these things are being tacked on to a sentence, the appeal without question is going to drop these years down dramatically. So, once again, fellows, remember I said it first, even for the ladies, R. Kelly is likely to be released in the next two years. So, this 30-year sentence is just for show. It's, for, it's a political move, it's for media, it's for the appeal of, to, to appeal to the public that, hey, we tried, we had them. But the appeals court will drop this down dramatically. And by that time, a lot of this is going to be more low-key than it's been in recent years. So, again, if Joycelyn Savage is really engaged to R. Kelly, I wish her the best. Everyone deserves a second, third, and fourth chance. That's what life is about. We are not a people to continue to judge and condemn people. A person can do wrong all their life, just like the man on the cross, just like the thief on the cross. And at that very moment before death, repent. And if a man can repent while he's living with many more years to go, then we are not to judge, for only God can do so. We can only judge accordingly to the changes that we see. When a person says, hey, I repented from this, then that's what we have to look at. We are not allowed to judge a person's past when that past is in the past because the person is living a completely different life. If that was the case, then we all should be condemned to death right here and now. But, you know, a lot of people won't want to look at life that way because they only want to see the dirt in other people's pocket, not their own. It's always been that way with human beings. Human beings are deflectors. Knowing the bad and the evil that all men and women have done throughout the course of life, when they see another, they look at it and say, hey, he's a bad guy, but a lot of these people who point the fingers are worse behind closed doors. But that's not what I'm here to say. All I'm here to say is let this man have a chance and the opportunity to, to repent. And I'm not saying that he should be out in the next couple years. I'm saying what is likely to happen. As far as me, I have no say in the matter. And even if I did, I wouldn't know which way to go because I'm not there. I haven't been there. I haven't spoken to the man. I haven't spoken one-on-one -on -one with the victims. So truly, I couldn't say either way because I know how things behind closed door can happen. Things what we see is a lot of times the manipulation of the justice system down from the police departments to the lawyers and the prosecutors and the defenders. And the judges so it's not always what you see so just remember that everything that you're told in media is not always what it is now no doubt R. Kelly's a dummy no doubt that he deserves to be where he's at no doubt that if all this was consensual as it's been reported to be then yes he deserves a second chance and I hope you guys feel the same, and if not, maybe one day you will when you find yourself in such a situation in life that you want everyone to give you a break and give you the benefit of the doubt. But to the next one, I'm going. Peace out.